So setting up bidirectional binding is actually very easy, but before I show you how to do it, let me just explain what we want to happen here. So we have a text field, and what we would like to be able to do is we want the user to be able to type a value in here and have that be stored in the system. But we would also like to be able to push this button and have this value be updated to what occurs when the button is clicked. So that's what we want to happen. It's not happening yet, but we're, we're all ready to go here. So we have our label and our text field. We have a string property that is ready to be bound. We already have our button action that is going to change the string upon click to some predefined values. So all we have to do is take our text field and its text property, just like we did previously, only instead of doing a bind, we're going to bind bidirectional. This is what allows the system to both accept user input as well as input changes from inside of the code. So all we have to do is set it to our two-way input property. And now we're going to rerun it. And you'll be able to see that now when I push this button clicked, it will change the value in the text field to these predefined values that we've determined. So there we go. So now what's interesting here is that while I might say that the value here is being changed in code, you don't really have any proof of that. It's being changed here visually when I type. But how do you know that this value is actually being stored in this string property? So what I can do next to show you that that is in fact occurring correctly is we can go ahead and take the label that we have and we can also bind it to the string property. So now we'll take the label and we'll take its text property and we'll bind it just regularly because it can't accept user input. So we'll just use a single bind and we'll bind it also to this two-way input property. So now you'll see that we're using this input property in multiple locations. It's bound to multiple controls and that's fine. There's no, there's no issue with that. So now when we run this, what we'll see is that the label and the text will mimic each other. And when the user types in the text field, that will be updated in this label below. So here I'm typing, and you'll see that this is updating as I'm typing. Now, this might not be what you would like. Sometimes you uh, don't necessarily want every single character as it comes across. You will want to wait until the user has finished with their input before accepting it uh, upon some condition. And we can go over how to do that in other videos. But the next thing I would like to show you, which is pretty cool, is that you might want to have two controls that the user is able to uh, put input in that would mimic each other. So what we can do next is we can actually create another text field. So we'll just create another one of these right underneath it and we'll call it text two. And we can go into our controller, make another one Now, I would like to show you a slightly different way of doing uh, bidirectional binding, and that's using the Fluent API bindings. So here what we can do is we can actually reference bindings, and again, we're going to do a bidirectional binding. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set these two text fields up such that they are bound to each other. Now, the first text field is already bound to this string property, so we can't bind him again. But we can put we can put the um, the two-way uh, input property in here. So we can say two-way input property, and then we can grab the second text field that we just grabbed. So text two and his property, text property. Okay. So now what's going to happen is whenever the second text field uh, is modified. That will be reflected in both the first text field and the label and vice versa. So these guys are now all hooked up to each other.
So now you can see that all three of these guys are being updated. This is the first text field. Let's change the second one. And what happens when I click the button? You'll see that all of these guys are now updated. So this is just another way. And by the way, I could have accomplished the first bidirectional binding using the Fluent API bindings bidirectional uh, as well. So there's multiple ways to accomplish this uh, same technique. So that's all I wanted to go over today in this video. As you can see, bidirectional data binding is very useful and also uh, very easy. So thank you so much for watching.